I've been looking for something to play with the family during the Christmas season for a really long time. And selfishly, I'm really looking for something other than a card game, something a little deeper that will keep me engaged along with the kids. So when I saw this remake of a Christmas Euro that's being produced by a company that I absolutely adore in Elf Creek Games, I pre-ordered it immediately and was really hoping that it would come in time to get a few plays in before Christmas to make it worth my money, you know? There's nothing worse than ordering that holiday game and it coming a little bit late, <clears throat> Septima. And after playing it a few times, I've come to the conclusion that if you happen to like this, you're probably gonna like it. And if you hate this and are just looking for a Christmas game to play with your family or really anyone, Eh, stick around, you may still like it. First and foremost, I have to say that this is only on the advanced version of the game. I haven't even considered playing the basic version of it. It's pretty light in general, and to kind of keep my interest up, I went straight to the advanced, and side note, kids had no problem going straight to that. I compare it to Viticulture loosely because it is a worker placement game instead of making wine you're building toys you're not aging any toys in a cellar or anything like that so it is a, some loose connection but there are some similarities to it so if you stick around with me we're going to walk through kind of what this game is we're gonna talk a little bit about what i like and what i don't like and kind of give you a final verdict on it Santa's Workshop is a pretty straightforward elf placement game where you're collecting resources to build toys. You're also, I don't know, what are you rescuing re reindeer? What are you doing? I don't know. Let me check. What is it called here? One moment, please. Your call is very important. I guess you're feeding, grooming, and exercising them, but really you're just placing one of your elves at the stable and you're collecting these cards in a kind of mini set collection. I guess it's not set collection because you're trying to get you're trying to get different reindeer. You obviously can't have two Rudolphs at the front, but I digress. I'm getting ahead of myself. You're also trying to decorate a Christmas tree to demonstrate that you have Christmas cheer whenever Santa comes around and inspects that Christmas cheer, and that happens every couple of days. We'll get there. The game loop in general is pretty simple. You're just placing your elves around the board to collect and do stuff. You can collect coal, which is a key component that is needed when you're actually getting materials. So when you get to coal, you get to fill up all of the coal spaces on your player board. You'll notice that there are a couple of blocking tiles to start the game with. You have to use resources collected to unblock those. So each time you go to that coal space, it becomes more and more powerful. You get to fill up more and more of that coal. So some of the things I like to do early in the game is to definitely upgrade that. You can also upgrade these mining tools on your board when you uncover them. It just basically tells you each time you go up to the mine to fill your coal, you get one victory point. You can do that twice, so you can be getting two victory points each and every time. Let's talk a little about the reindeer stable upgrades. As you upgrade those tiles and uncover them, it allows you to spend less to get these reindeer cards, which I found is pretty powerful. You can go and collect blueprints. These are a probably the most rare resource, and it has a really interesting kind of timing mechanism around your placement where if you go first you get the least blueprints if you go after that first elf you're able to have that elf help you but you also have to pay for their services so there's a benefit in going early there's also a benefit in going late in that you get more blueprints and some of the most kind of expensive toys the ones that are going to give you the most points are going to need more of these blueprints you can place your elf in these specific resource spaces where you're collecting the resource. And if you get there early, you can also pay extra coal to upgrade your elf. Side tangent, looking at your player board, you see that you have these elf spots and each of them are unique. And they're unique because you can upgrade that specific worker. And you do that by getting these tiles. They are finite, each round one comes out. So you're kind of racing to go and get those upgrades, assuming you have the coal to pay for both the upgrades and the spot to go grab those resources. Those resources have to go directly onto a toy card. You can't store them for later. So you have to have those toys in order to store those resources and complete those cards to get points. Speaking of those, you're going to want a steady flow of those toys. Going to the mail room to get more of these toys to be able to build, you can hold up to five. And really the major loop of this game is going and getting resources, put it on the toys, completing these toy cards, going and get more toys, so on and so forth. Some other ulterior things you're doing to score points that are adding kind of extra dimensions of thought as you're playing this game 
are those aforementioned reindeer cards. You're trying to collect unique versions of these reindeer cards, scoring an exponential increase in points the more unique cards that you have. On top of that, there's benefits in actually grabbing these cards because you can take that benefit as you go up and pay for those reindeer cards. On top of that, you're starting with these player specific ornaments. You can go to the Christmas tree spot and place these ornaments. The earlier in the game that you do this, the better. You're first off able to take the benefit of the ornament, also the benefit of the spot that you're placing it on. However, it does go into the calculation of your Christmas cheer. The game is organized over nine days and after three days, Santa comes down and inspects your Christmas cheer. That is the number of toys that you have completed in that time and also the number of ornaments that you have hung on the tree. Now the toys don't get counted again during the next inspection. However, what does are these ornaments. So if you're placing them early, you have that compounding effect of having them counted multiple times towards your Christmas cheer. And there is that side benefit of getting the extra resources as you place them. So it's probably a good idea to kind of hit that Christmas tree early and often. So let's talk a little bit about the things I like. First and foremost, theme. I think there is a really small supply of holiday games in general. And I think that's probably by design. They only sell during certain times of the year. In general, they're probably not huge sellers and um, it's tough to hold a bunch of inventory on a holiday game all year long. Uh, so I understand why they don't exist. I do appreciate that this one exists. And the second one, this reminds me of Viticulture. I really like Viticulture. It's not my favorite game in the world. It was an early entry for me into worker placement, so I got excited about it. The theme is fairly dry. The artwork is meh. But in general, I think it's a pretty solid game. And if you want to get into the worker placement genre, it's a really good place to start. So when I saw this, which is a little more approachable and certainly more family kid friendly from a thematic perspective, I really love that it existed. I mean, it's a loose comparison, you know, and if anything, I'm sure this might have possibly borrowed from that viticulture formula a little bit. <laughs> You're placing workers to get stuff to be able to create toys, AKA wine. You're not having to go through the whole idea of aging grapes and, and all of that. You are grabbing reindeer cards that give you special bonuses. There's very similar mechanics in Viticulture as well. You're also upgrading your player board, albeit in a totally different way. You are not upgrading and unlocking spots for you to go to. You're upgrading the power of your workers or elves. You're upgrading kind of the bonuses that you get or how powerful a spot actually is, just like the coal where you unlock more spots, you get more coal, you get where I'm going with this. It's a pretty straightforward, which Viticulture is up to an extent, worker placement, gather resources, build stuff, score points game. And I like it, I like it for that, I think it's great. And speaking of the player board upgrades, I really like that they exist. I think it's really important that they're there. It it pulls on the player's kind of strings a little bit when they're trying to decide how to spend those resources, especially early on. You can put it straight to the toys and start to collect those toys or the idea of early investment in something that will make you more powerful in the end game is one in which a lot of people that are just being introduced to board games don't really understand. And especially to kids, it's a really great kind of teaching mechanism around early investment leads to greater returns later on. So when you are upgrading your mining action to get more points as you go there, it's just a more efficient way to score points. Or when you're upgrading your reindeer action, so those reindeer cards are cheaper, it's just a more efficient way to get better reindeer cards. The next thing is the price. I mean, this thing is what? Let me check. This. I think it's like 35 bucks. Let's see. Santa's. All right, it's 40 bucks plus shipping. I mean, in today's day and age with kind of designer board games, 40 bucks is pretty cheap. And I imagine this will probably get to somewhere like a game nerds and, and you'll be able to kind of bundle it for free shipping and maybe it'll be 35 bucks. I actually think when I grabbed this thing on pre-order, it was actually 35 bucks. Uh, don't quote me on that. I just seem to remember the, the figure 35 for whatever reason. But it's bottom line, it's a really reasonably priced game. So the things that I didn't love, and I'm gonna speak out of both sides of my mouth here. I just said, I really like the price. The production is meh. 
you know i the the player boards are really flimsy in fact mine you might not be able to see that all of mine came bent or it kind of does bother me it's not the end of the world i'm not complaining to anybody i don't want new ones it just is what it is but with that said if they can get bent in shipping and this is like a family game i mean this is just super cheap cardstock which i think goes into wanting to hit a certain price point i totally understand it you know it is what it is would i want to pay more for dual layer boards and some better resources i think so i absolutely would especially for a game like this with that said i mean there's some bling on here some of the resources are like shiny and you know i think the i personally like the artwork my wife didn't love it very much she didn't like the way the elves looked yeah, you know, that's subjective. I'm not going to knock it for that whatsoever. I'd like to see some premium resources, especially in kind of a toy building game. I thought that would have been really cool. I will say the workers are supposed to be different. There's technically like a fat and a skinny one. You can barely tell the difference between the two. That's important because you're upgrading really specific workers. And if you kind of want to have accountability that a person is using the right worker and getting kind of that upgrade bonus, you'd want to know which ones are different. I think one of them has their arm up, so it's really easy to tell that that one's different, but the other two aren't. Uh, in my copy, I did get on one of the colors, two of the same ones. So we didn't, we were playing with one of the colors and didn't know there was a fat and skinny version. So it was really tough to tell the difference on, but that's fine. It does come with this nice little, like you put together this, this little Santa sleigh for a uh, used toy cards or car or toy cards that you've already kind of uh, scored. I think that was a cool little addition and there's this nice little bag. What is it even there? I think it's for coal or whatever it may be. This one doesn't like serve. It's hard to keep your coal in there. You're digging in it. So I just pour it out. It's less of a, of like a gameplay organization. It's more just like in goes into the box and it's constantly coming untied. It's for the price. I think production is fine for what this is and kind of a new edition. And it's the first Christmas edition. I would have just liked to see more. And, and to be clear, I probably would have paid an extra 10 bucks for it. And number two, um, this is an older game and the advanced to me feels more like a beginner. Like I said, I didn't play the beginner, so I don't know how much different it feels, but you know, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's tough for me to say like, that's a negative on the game because for some people, this is plenty advanced. If you're not kind of a seasoned board game or especially seasoned kind of Euro player, I think there's plenty of things to think of. I, but I think something like this, I get bored of really, really easily. But I think the saving grace is that it's a Christmas game. This thing is going to get kind of packed away for 10 months and then come back out and feel fresh again. I think there's a lot of games that doesn't naturally have that kind of holiday play cycle. So I think that's a big benefit for it. Like if the, if it was this big ornate toy building Lacerda, I think that would be kind of badass. But I just don't think it's going to, uh, I think it would be hard to kind of come back out once a year and relearn the rules and all of that stuff. So it's, it's not really a negative. It's just a, an acknowledgement of its weight, I guess. All in all, this game serves a purpose. It's an entry level worker placement exposure to a family audience that loves a Christmas theme that doesn't really have anything else for the holidays that can kind of come out and be fun and unique it will absolutely stay in my collection it absolutely gets my stamp of approval i think it serves a purpose in my collection and at this point that's really what i'm looking for if i'm expanding on my collection i've got too many games i've got so many games that i'm not going to ever get to the table again frankly if i'm honest and if i do it will be so intermittent that the lift to try to learn them again is punitive but it's refreshing to have a game like this that is light enough that can come out once a year. You get two, three, four plays of it and it just serves its purpose and it has its natural life cycle. And you don't have to feel guilty about putting one, another game back in the Calyx and not playing it because you're not supposed to. So this review is probably coming too late because if you were to order this right now, you may not get a lot of play out of it, um, but I think it would be a cool one to have stored away for next year when Christmas comes up. Or heck, you may like it. You may love the Christmas all year long. You may be a Christmas freak and this may be your grail game. And if I've described some things you like and it is, hey, more power to you, have at it.
With that said, I really appreciate you being here. Thank you for watching. If you're hearing this, thanks for staying to the end. It helps the algorithm, like, subscribe, all of that YouTube stuff. Go ahead and do it. <laughs> I would be appreciative. I'm out.